This is Gabriel, an average bloke from New Orleans, writer and owner of the St. George's bookstore. He's a bit of a smart ass and so womanizer, as is quite obvious right from the start in the first conversation with his assistant. He flirts with almost every female character in the game, as long as she's younger than 100. On the other hand, he's not some skirt chasing wanker who can't keep his winker in the trousers. He's smart, sometimes funny, and during the game it's clear he won't leave his friends at the first sign of danger. Yeah, someone would scream out toxic masculinity these days, but let's stay in the sensible world of 1993. You? Give me a break, the devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps, like yours. If you click new game, you'll miss intro, which is for some reason a separate item in the menu. Perhaps if you want to watch it even if you're halfway through a game? The story is set in New Orleans, and it revolves around voodoo, as it does almost everything that's set in New Orleans. The game begins with a conversation between Gabe and his sort of assistant Grace. He is working on a new book about voodoo and had Grace to find him some information about this topic. Right from the start, you find out about strange murders that plague the city of New Orleans. Locals call them voodoo murders, as they reckon it has something to do with voodoo because of the way the victims are killed. And since Gabe is researching voodoo for his new book, these murders become a big part of his research. In fact, the entire game is a detective story about these murders, and no long after start you find out it's an outstanding game with elaborate story based on local folklore and actual real places and people. Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy, I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. Corner request assistance at the For those not familiar with voodoo, no, no, not their voodoo, it's a religion brought to French Louisiana by African slaves during 18th century and sort of practiced till this day. Although today it's more like a tourist attraction than anything else. As the story develops, Gabriel gets deeper and deeper into the murder's mystery and finds out some unsettling facts about his heritage. I'm not, however, going any deeper and deeper into the story, I don't want to spoil it for those who never played Gabriel Knight. I must say, I love how the characters are portrayed. The game does a cracking job setting up its characters. Everyone's personality is different and it's perfectly set in the game events. Like Detective Knight, Mosley. I had a feeling you'd show up. So, how's it hanging, bud? Lousy. I hate crime scenes. People are sick fucks, you know that night? I'm starting to get that impression. Gabriel's childhood friend, who believes he'll play a major part in his new book, so he provides Gabriel with confidential police information about voodoo murders. He was played by Mark Hamill. That's when he was still considered an actor. His performance in Star Wars wasn't exactly stellar. It's not true! That's impossible! Search your feelings, you know it to be true. No! No! He used to be a hero for many boys. I wonder whose hero is this Tossa. He did a great job here though. Another interesting character is Malia Getty, a rich girl who becomes unreachable Gabe's wet dream the instant he sees her. She plays a big part in the story, and on every occasion she gives Gabe a hard time. I almost feel sorry for him. I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. I already mentioned his assistant Grace, who loves taking the piss out of Gabe every time they talk. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. Everyone plays some role in the story and virtually no character is there just to fill the space. Gabriel Knight is a classic point-and-click adventure. As such, you can draw Gabriel with mouse cursor, pick up, use, talk, look, etc. Right mouse button cycles through different functions or you can move the cursor to the top of the screen where a menu appears and you can choose what you want to do there. Left click, of course, executes the function. 
There are not many items you can find in game, but at least they need to be used logically. You don't use tweezers to take out your hemorrhoid or stick it to someone's nose, but you actually use it to pick up something tiny. The game is more about talking with other characters, which give you clues and important information. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Cabri's sound cool. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Those killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. When you discover something important during dialogue, or pick up some item, or use some item, it makes this sound. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. On you receive some points which indicate how much you progress in the game. You can even get a clue just talking rubbish, so don't miss or skip any dialogue. And if you feel like Gabe's moving too slow, you can crank up walking speed a bit. What can I do for you, detective? Considering the age, graphics is stunning. At least I fancy the hand-drawn environment and characters. In the setup, you can choose between VGA and SVGA mode. Unfortunately, SVGA mode only makes menu and some usable objects in high resolution. It's a bit of a shame, but other than that, it's got perfectly detailed environment and characters. Unless you play the game on very large screen, in that case, it really looks like crap. Hi. Uh -huh. Mind if I Music is pretty good. It was composed by Robert Holmes. He's no well-known composer and I'm almost positive he got the job mainly because he was a producer. And his wife is Jane Jensen, or maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Nevertheless, he's done a pretty good job. I wouldn't call it perfect or groundbreaking, but it's definitely above average. What can I do for you, detective? Mind if I ask you a few questions? He uses MIDI as most of the games of the time. On also, as most of the games of the time, it was recorded using Roland Sound Canvas SC55. So the best way to enjoy the music is some kind of sound canvas. On this always, I record a soundtrack using Sound Canvas, which you can find in the description. There are two versions of Gabriel Noir, the SCAD and CD version. They're practically the same, except for the main menu, which uses different background image. Video sequences are just a series of static images in the Discord version. On the diskette version also likes voiceovers. Gabe's voice is done by Tim Curry. I'm not too familiar with New Orleans accent, but to my ears it seems a bit dodgy and overdone. Other than that, it seems to me that all other characters are spot on. Five years ago, Jane Jensen released 20th Anniversary Edition with remade graphics, remastered music and some new puzzles. Yeah, environment looks good, but I don't fancy how the characters look or how they speak. I prefer 1993 version of this. Good morning. You look like hell. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes, because having nightmares is what I do, apparently. Seventh damn night in a row. Gabriel Knight is one of my favorite games, and I reckon it's not just my favorite game. I know, I said a couple of times already in previous reviews, but it's true. I've got so many favorites. So, for the next review, I'll choose some rubbish game. Well, to sum this up. Brilliant story, outstanding characters, great music and tons of fun playing the bloody game. It's a shame they don't do games like this anymore. If you never play the game, go ahead, grab your mouse and get to it. It's well worth it. On the safe for this review, enjoy the soundtrack, leave the comment and don't mess with voodoo. Catch you next time.